All right, now we're ready to open up number one on the checklist. This is the one that starts out, is there any listed property, old or new? Listed property simply refers to a code section, which is called listed property. And it is a set of different kinds of property that the government is restricting your use of all the fancy stuff. The fancy stuff is limited expensing, bonus depreciation, double declining balance depreciation. You cannot use those if your qualified business use is not greater than 50%. <clears throat> In addition to that, even if it is, say it's 70%, you can use all the fancy stuff, but you have to prorate your basis first. And I would suggest that you either look at the examples in the outline or be aware that they are there for when you get quiz questions or blackboard quiz questions or test questions because qualified business use is not exactly what you can prorate your basis with if you have mixed use. <coughs> Excuse me. Because <clears throat> you should, you might have some qualified business use and then some non-qualified business use, which still would allow you to recover your basis through cost recovery, but would not allow you to have the fancy stuff. And once again, see the examples in the outline. So once again, a reminder that it's also on the chart. If you're not sure about how the rules work, sometimes that can be a quick refresher to get you where you want to go. But your good old standbys are your publication 945 and the instructions for the 4562. Uh, generally, I will give you both recovery period in the class life. However, cars and computers are five years for all purposes, and sometimes I don't bother to list that. Uh, you should know that cars and computers have a five-year recovery period, and for reasons you do really do not care about, their class life, which is the second only other alternative you have for recovering, turns out to be exactly the same number. Right? So you're limited to five years in all purposes, no matter what you would like to do. You must use a five-year life. When you have listed property, you start on the back of your 4562. So when you're doing Jackie, there'll be very few numbers on the front. You will want to use lines 1 through 13 if you are entitled to limited expensing. And then you're going to drop all the way down to the bottom before you use any other numbers. So do not duplicate on lines 14 through 19 what you are putting on the back of the form. So we're going to look at each of these pieces individually. Uh, note that line 24A asks you, do you have written evidence to support your deductions? This has been added several places throughout the tax forms because the government has discovered that some people will cheat if they don't leave a paper trail. Other people are reluctant to actually say in their tax return, that they have written evidence if they don't. So it cuts down a little bit on the cheating. Nobody knows exactly how much, but you can imagine that if you were definitely going to break a rule, you would rather not leave a paper trail, all right? And then we're gonna talk about all these other lines in the next several slides. But this, this particular part five of the 4562 provides a good visual for everything that's going on when you answer yes to do you have any listed property on number one of the checklist. And then note above the very start, automobiles, other vehicles, your boat, your motorcycle, certain computers, those are computers used in a non 100% business setting and the property used for entertainment, recreation or amusement. Those are the things they have targeted as listed property I think I may have included a piece of furniture or something on Jackie. Put it on the back, although technically you would not have to. Uh, but if you insist, put it on the front. I can adjust. But uh, I wanted you to have different lives to see how all the different uh, lines of the form works. And I felt kind of silly having no piece of furniture to use her equipment on. All right, lines 25 and 26 are what you use when your qualified business use is greater than 50%. Don't forget, I do expect you to read about qualified business use, your publication 946, your instructions to your 4562, and there are notes in the outline in your depreciation package. The short story here is if your qualified business use is greater than 50%, you're going to prorate your basis and then go straight down the checklist 
and do everything we were doing before. Now the back is where you're going to take all of those numbers. So there's very little information that's going to be on the front of the 4562 for Mickey's tax return. As you'll see in a minute, you'll need lines 1 through 13 if you're entitled to limited expensing. And then you will bring any bonus and other cost recoveries in way at the bottom. I think it's line 21. And so that middle section, line 14, 17, and 19 will be totally blank. Now the order is different here. You may have noticed that the front of the 4562 matches my checklist. Number two is limited expensing, that's line 12. Bonus depreciation, number three is line 14. And then the table stuff, which starts with number four on the checklist, comes next. Here the order is a little bit different. Your bonus or first year depreciation is here now in line 25. Uh, it was supposed to be a temporary provision. In fact, it is scheduled to expire at the end of 2013. There is some speculation that it will be back retroactively for all of 2014. When Congress comes back after the November elections, <coughs> some people think that they will pass some tax legislation. At that point, it's not going to hurt anybody. They'll either be out the door or reelected, and so they can afford to be daring. So we'll have to wait and see. The limited expensing is over there, that very last column uh, from row 26. And then what is going to happen on line 26 is your line 17 and line 19 depreciation. So you could have some things you bought last year that are listed property. You must continue to track your qualified business use. You must report each item in detail in a year that you own them. So you could have what would have been line 17 and what would be line 19 all mixed together here. Now when your qualified business use is not greater than 50 percent, you're going to use line 27. And the short story here is you're going to prorate your basis. You're going to be denied bonus depreciation. If you go back and look at the instructions for line 25, it says if your qualified business use is greater than 50%, you're going to be denied limited expensing. And notice that the box is grayed out here. And you're going to be forced to use straight line depreciation. And so I'm just going to note all of that here for you as a review. Your business investment percentage, notice it says business slash investment. That's not just your qualified business use. If you're using your laptop for qualified business use and to track your rental properties, your percentage could be larger than the qualified business use. It's a qualified business use that determines whether you're on line 27 or line 26. Well, your cost, the way the form works is report 100% of your cost. Your basis for depreciation, sometimes I get people saying because it uh, has a useful life and I want to recover it, what they mean is not your reason you're depreciating. What they mean is your dollar amount. So that is simply C, your business and investment percentage, times your cost or other basis. Still need a recovery period or class life. Remember that um, when you are here, you're being forced to use the class life. Right? When you are using depreciation on property with a qualified business use of less than 50 percent, you must use the class life. It's the larger of your two numbers. So I'll always give you your qualified, uh, your recovery period is five years, your class life is six or something like that, except when they're cars and computers. Remember they always have a five-year class and recovery period. There are no differences. You must use straight line depreciation. You still need a modifying convention. Right, G is method slash convention. So on the other side of that dash, you're supposed to write down mid quarter or half year. If it is a property from a prior year, you bought it in 2011, you're still using it. You would refer back to 2011 to determine your qualified business, your modifying convention. If it's this year and you had both listed property and non-listed property, it would definitely still be in your denominator. Your qualified business percentage would be in your denominator. It would also be in your numerator 
if you happen to place it in service in October, November, or December. All right, and remember, no limited expensing. You do not take anything to the back, uh, front of the 4562 until you finish the back. So then the question is, where do you go? Well, you know, all schedules tell you where to go. So if you look at line 28, it's saying use column H of lines 25 through 27. So that's your bonus depreciation and your regular depreciation on both the greater than 50% and less than 50%. All of that goes to line one of page one. So you're going all the way down here. So lines 14, 17, and 19 will be blank because all of that information is provided from line 28 of the back. And then if you go back up and look at line 29 instructions, this is your limited expensing. Right? You're going to enter on line 7 of page 1. So what you're going to do is see down on line 7 says the list of property that you have elected to expense. Qualified business use has to be bigger than 50% to do this. Line two is the total cost of your section 179 property. All right. C instructions means that line two includes uh, everything you placed in service from the back if it's qualified business use was greater than 50%. If it's qualified business use is not, then it's not a section 179 property. So oh, if you only use something 30%, it would not be in your line two and you would not be permitted to take a deduction on line seven. So on Mick, Jackie's tax return, on the front, you're gonna use lines one through 13, right, with 500,000 still on line one and two million on line three. And you're gonna bring what we were be using as line six, you're gonna bring a single number in and put it on line seven to account for any of the back page that you have elected to expense. Remember, we're using pig rules. If you can expense, do that before you do bonus depreciation, even though the back is slightly out of order and has expensing listed or bonus listed before expensing. Stick with your checkbook checklist for the ordering rules and you won't go wrong. So we've got two examples here. One where the qualified business use is greater than 50%. And then we got one coming up when it's 50% or less. So your checklist says if you do have listed property, the very first thing you need to do is prorate your basis. So for our purposes, we're going to take that $825,000 worth of equipment purchase and reduce it down to $701,250. Uh, the book tends to use 100% numbers and then they multiply by 85% at the end, but that can cause you to make some mistakes, especially if you are trying to take uh, limited expensing and are worried about whether or not you're over your two million. So for our purposes, I think if you follow the checklist, prorate first, you'll be in good shape. And then you're just gonna move straight down the checklist, right? If you are qualified business use is greater than 50%, so you would be entitled to limited expensing, if you meet the requirements for number two on the checklist, you would also be entitled to bonus depreciation if you meet the requirements on the checklist. And then you do have to determine whether it's half year or mid quarter. In our examples, we don't have a mixed example. If you had both listed and non-listed property, remember the business percentage of the listed property would be included in this test. So you don't ignore it, you don't isolate it, Everything you have will either be mid-quarter or half-year every year, right? There's no this is that and that is that. It's all mid-quarter or it's all half-year. And then we're ready to do our basis method modifying convention. So let's run through the numbers. <clears throat> our basis is the 701-250. We are entitled to uh, one limited expensing. I did not print in the 4562. You should be comfortable now. I'm way under 2 million. So there is no restriction on my ability to have line five be 500,000. And my business income limitation is a million dollars. So line 11 is not gonna give me a problem. So then I have a subtotal for bonus depreciation. I go back and check my facts and it's not new property. 
So I don't get to take this, not because of the 85%, but because it's not new property. And so that gives me my table bases of 201, 250. No acquisitions in the fourth quarter, right? September is third quarter. So this is half your property. So my basis method modifying convention gives me a final answer of 500,000 from limited, no bonus, and 40,250 40, for the other. So that's my final answer, please. The number that will give me all the points. So here's our second example, and you'll notice that our qualified business use is 50% or less. Uh, I will give you the recovery period in class life. Qualified business use less than 35% means, one, you must prorate your basis. Two, you must use the alternative depreciation system, which is straight line, uh, and you don't get any bells or whistles. All right, so start with number one. Prorate basis, use ADS, straight line. And so now our basis for cost recovery is only 288750 and so when we go to number two on the checklist, it says you're out of luck. Your qualified business use must be greater than 50%. Number three on the checklist says you're out of luck. Qualified business use must be greater than 50%. But we do still have to test for mid-quarter. And then we use basis method modifying convention. And remember that our method now will be straight line over our class life. And the modifying convention, unless you want to wade through your 946 and find a table, which is six year straight line, half year, you're simply going to, oh, no, this isn't half year, is it? I believe it's going to be mid quarter. Uh, it's easier since it's straight line depreciation just to add your own modifying convention. So here's our numbers our prorated basis, no expensing, no bonus. So our amount for what would be tables, or in our case, a straight line calculation, is the 288,750. 100% of the acquisitions are in the fourth quarter, so it is mid-quarter property. So we've owned it one quarter or fraction thereof. So we're going to get a 1 minus 0.5 divided by 4, because there's four quarters in a year. Going to use straight line over class life. So we take our bases multiply by 1 over 6, divide by 6, however you want to do the math, and then we're going to reduce that number down to 0.5 over 4. So our final answer will be 0 for 12 and 14, and a whopping 6,016 bucks for line 19, which is actually line 26, right? And so that's our final answer, please. That leaves one last concept on our checklist, and that's the fact that automobiles and light cars and trucks have a restriction on the maximum amount that they can deduct. And you can see here that that restriction continues on past the first year. Uh, this information is also in your depreciation packet. Uh, if you are entitled to bonus depreciation, <clears throat> so it would be a new automobile or truck, and your qualified business use was greater than 50%, you would be able to add $8,000 for the equivalent for bonus depreciation to the 3,000 and change that's on the first year for 2013. So this is number five from the checklist. <clears throat> Remember that you this is a highest amount you can get. It is not a guarantee. I strongly suggest that you do the normal one through four calculation, and then you go back and double check to see whether or not the 280F limit would give you a smaller amount. It's always safer to do a little extra work than to do too little. So we're just going to go back and visit the last two examples that started out on number one in the checklist. And regardless of what the property was, uh, if the qualified business use was 85%, you would have gone through here. Remember, automobiles technically have a six-year, five-year class life, but you would not need that in the 85% example because the you never get there, right? You're using the recovery period. 
because when it's 80, 50, more than 50%, you simply prorate the basis and you move on. However, now that you've come up with that nice big number, number five on the checklist says, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, before you can deduct what's on line 22, you have to go back and you have to consider number five on the checklist. Right? So the automobile limit here is 3160 because this was secondhand property. You could not have taken bonus if you wanted to. And remember, you must prorate for your business use. So the answer that we have over on the left is not acceptable if it's an automobile or a light van or truck. If it's an automobile, the final answer will be instead of 540000 and change, it'll be 2681 which is the 3160 prorated. So the 3160 comes from the fact that the government assumes, has legislated, that when you place an automobile in service, they do not care what you spent for it. They're going to treat its purchase price as about $15,000. And that number is indexed for inflation, changes periodically. And so your first year uh, under half year rules would be 20%. So they simply set the limit at an arbitrary 20% of whatever that arbitrary artificial purchase price was. So you can see right now the inflation factors are having the automobile cost a tad more than 15000 So this 280F limit will never be less than 3000 uh, but it can be a little bit larger depending on the mass each year. And that mass is determined by certain inflation adjustments. If this had been a new car, the answer would have been uh, 9486 which is 85% of the limit plus 8,000. And the story is sad also if your qualified business use is 35% because 6016 seemed like a really small number, but we're going to make it even smaller. Right? Now note that we would actually use five years for automobiles, which would have made the number change slightly, but I know you're getting just as tired as I am. So I'm not reworking all the numbers. Just remember that when you have automobiles and their qualified business use is 50% or less, the class life equals the recovery period equals five years. Right? So now we have to consider line five on the checklist before we get our final answer, please. And here the 3160 is the only option because there was no bonus because the qualified business use was 50% or less. And remember, you must prorate for business use. So your final answer now is 1,106 instead of the 6,000 and change. This is just the back of the 4562, the section B. Uh, if you use an automobile in your business and you meet any of these requirements, you must provide information in detail here. Once again, the idea is if you have to write it down, you'll be less likely to cut corners. So there are requirements and explanations for all of this in the instructions for your 4562 and your 946. So if you get a question about any one of these lines, I would suggest that you look it up. And then the uh, rest of the slides here, I'm not going to do too much narration. I generally don't discuss these things in class. There are examples in the practice set that I will put out. Note that amortization for tax purposes and book is pretty identical with the exception that goodwill does get recovered for tax. And I don't think it gets recovered for the moment for book. Uh, note that you use a full month convention, which means that if you purchase it at any time in June, uh, June through December is seven months, so you would take seven over 12 of the normal full year calculation. There are examples in the book and problems in the practice set. You will probably see a question about amortization, either goodwills or patents or something. It's simply straight line over whatever life is given, and you use a full month convention. Startup and organization costs were discussed in a little bit in Chapter 6. 
Uh, you do track the cost of each separately. Startup cost and organization cost are different. Uh, if you place in each category less than 50000 you have a provision that works a lot like limited expensing, but the numbers are a whole lot smaller. So if you place in service 50000 or less, the first 5000 gets to expense right off the top. The remainder is amortized over 180 months. And then if you do spend more than 50000 you have a phase out. This is a dollar for dollar phase out for every amount that you're over dollar you're over 50,000 works just like lines 1 through 5 of the 4562 except you would put 5,000 on line 1 and you'd put 50,000 on line 3 once again there are examples in the problem set and then this is where on the 4562 you report amortization uh, that would include the goodwill and the organization cost, the pat pensions, not pensions, the uh, patents and anything like that. Uh, and then notice that just like there's a line 17 where you report the prior year amount for depreciation, there's line 43 where you report any remaining amortization for things placed in service prior to this year. Research and experimentation, I just wanted you to know that the rules are different for book and for tax. I will not test you on them. Just know that research and experimentation, you will get a book to tax adjustment. This may come up in your um, advanced financial accounting when you're doing book to tax adjustments. Just remember that you got to find a difference and you would look it up at that point. And then depletion is pretty much the same for book and for tax. Uh, you have your cost depletion and your percentage depletion. The rules work pretty much exactly the same as they work for book purposes. And then note that if you take um, percentage depletion, uh, there are some limitations for tax that you won't find for book. So you cannot create a loss once again. Right? You have limitations. So if this is of interest to you, see the examples in the book. And just a few closing comments. Once again, I suggest that you do the slides, then you do the Blackboard quiz, then you do Jackie's return. And then if you are in points trouble and you need some good mini tests, I keep getting suggestions about what can I do, what can I do. Here I strongly suggest that you go through the practice problems, work them out, check the solutions, and then ask about what you don't understand. Traditionally, if you put the elbow grease in for depreciation, you will like your scores. But this is math. If you do not do lots of different problems before you come in for testing, your brain will be slow. It's 9 o'clock at night. You've been up since forever. You are tired. You need to give your brain all the, all the possible benefits that it can. Right? Give it it all. Give it your all. 